this video we're going to look at pipe jointing. How do we connect pipes? Uh, the most obvious one is manholes. Um, with gravity systems the pipe comes into a manhole and then it goes out of the manhole. So a manhole is a connection between the pipelines. It also provides access to the pipeline as well so people can go down into the uh, manhole itself and um, access the pipes. Uh, it's normally included at the change of every pipe angle um, when it um, changes its horizontal and vertical alignments. Um, every 100 metres, that's um, going out now that we've got little robot inspectors, but uh, the 100 metres used to be because that was the length of a cleaning rod, 50 metres long, uh, so you, you needed a manhole every 100 metres to be able to clean the whole pipe. Um, changes in pipe size um, and as I said it's used to access and clear lines. Uh, the way a manhole works is it's this um, concrete or um, polyethylene or PVC pipe comes into it, it's concreted in. Um, for concrete pipes it's very easy, you just pour concrete over top of it, but for PVC and polyethylene you have to have special connections because uh, concrete doesn't bond very well with um, plastic pipe. Uh, connections between concrete and PVC pipes, rigid pipes, um, the most common one is uh, spigot socket joints. So the spigot is the bit that goes into the socket, so the socket's the bit on the outside, the spigot's the one on the inside. Um, so the spigot slides into the socket, there's a rubber ring joint, um, uh, making sure that there's um, water can't track along the connection. There is still a water path there, so the O-ring, the, the rubber ring, is really quite important. Uh, so these are called rubber ring joint connections, RRJs. Uh, and the rubber ring is for the watertight connection. Uh, the other way of using a spigot and socket joint for PVC pipes is that instead of having a rubber ring you actually weld the two pipes together. So what you do is you paint a, um, a chemical onto it which melts just the top surface of the PVC. You twist the pipes um, so that there is um, the whole circumference of both the pipe socket and the pipe spigot are actually being melted uh, and then you leave it. Uh, the melted material that's been chemically melted um, sets and the um, it become what comes one material. So the spigot and socket are now welded together and it forms a watertight joint. So looking at rubber ring joints in a little bit more detail, there's the spigot, there's the socket, and the rubber ring is actually circular, so it rolls over, so you, you put it on the spigot, uh, you roll the socket over top and it crushes the rubber ring so it's tight against both surfaces there. So you can see a guy there putting the uh, rubber ring on the spigot and then they are sliding the socket over top of it. Solvent welding, you can see the person putting the um, the chemical on which uh, melts the inside of the um, socket and then he's putting the spigot in and he's turning it and then he'll leave it and they'll set to form a watertight joint. Butt welding. This is the way that you connect polyethylene pipe. As I said polyethylene pipe is flexible so it cannot be connected with a rubber ring joint. Uh, it'll just deform and it won't form a watertight joint. Uh, it also is quite hard to chemically bond polyethylene pipe. It doesn't. It's very hard to glue stuff to it, for example. Uh, it's just the nature of the material, which makes it very good for sewer pipes because it's very hard for um, stuff to, to stick to the sides of a polyethylene pipe. So the way you have to do polyethylene pipe to connect it is by melting it. So in this case here, uh, with the butt welding, you um, weld both ends, um, then you force them together um, in a um, in a machine, a welding machine, and then you keep it there for a while. Um, what happens then is the two the, the connected area, the melted area, sets and forms a joint between them. Um, in fact, there is the the two um, the join. There is no evidence of a join after the melting is completed. It is as if it was one pipeline. You can't see a join line at all. 
Um, in fact, the joint usually ends up being the strongest part of the pipe because it's thicker. So the pipe is held in a cradle, um, a special machine, I'll show you a picture of one in a minute. Uh, the ends are trimmed square, they're melted, then they're pushed together, they're held together for a set period, and then when it's released you end up with a uh, clean butt weld. So there's the machine there, so you can see that that's one pipe there, and there's the other pipe. They're in these clamps in the, in the cradle, and what happens there is there is the cutting blade, so um, the first thing they do is they lower that down, they lower the cutting blade down, trim both ends, then they lower in a heating element which is hot on both sides, push them against it, melt it, and then they um, push them both together and hold them there in the cradle. Um, you need to hold it there for a set period of time, um, otherwise you'll get micro cracking. Electrofusion couplers are another way of doing it. Um, they involve a special connection there, an electrofusion coupler, um, and that coupler has a whole lot of little um, elements in it, so it's like a giant heater. You connect a, a electrofusion machine to the the ends of the electrofusion couplers, those terminals there, uh, and they produce an electro, um, electricity flow through the pipe, through the, the through the wires. It causes heat and the um, material around the wires melts as does the material in the pipe. So the wires are in contact with both the pipe and the coupler. It melts the, the coupler material and the pipe material and once again when they set they form one um, connection. You need to make sure that the EF machine is matched to the coupler. If you have too much power then it will burn holes through the coupler and through the pipe. If you have too little, then it won't melt it entirely and you won't get a watertight joint. You also need to make sure that both pipes are in line with each other. If they're not, then you're going to end up with a joint that's not watertight. Uh, EF couplers are quite popular when you have to do a connection in the trench where it's very hard to get the um, butt welding coupler, uh, butt welding cradle into a trench. So EF couplers are quite good for that sort of use. So there's a picture of it there. So you can see they've connected up the terminals there. He's got a little um, a bar scanner there. So he's scanning the bar code on the coupler and that will automatically set the machine to produce the right voltage for the right period of time for that particular joint. So that's um, new modern innovation that makes um, takes some of the errors out of using electrofusion couplers. So there's a connection between a smaller pipe and a bigger pipe. Uh, there's the electrofusion machine. You can see him connecting up it up there. Once again, scanning the barcode, which tells this machine um, the voltage and the period of time it needs to last for. Steel pipe and valve systems. Um, oftentimes, I mentioned that the three types of pipe are concrete, polyethylene, and UPVC. But oftentimes, we'll have to have steel pipe as well. Um, in some particular instances. In this case a pump station um, we use steel pipe for pump stations because um, there are very high pressures there uh, there's a lot of movement and stuff. So steel pipe is more expensive than the other two it's not normally used, um, it can be used in water supply but um, normally polyethylene is much more economical. You can see also that the connections, the, um, the valves there they're all made out of steel too, so you've got steel to steel connections which is much easier than trying to do steel to um, plastic pipe connections. Uh, so in this case here you've got a whole steel section, um, steel pipes connecting to steel um, fittings um, until it sort of gets outside when it will connect to a polyethylene um, um, pipeline. You can also see that in the um, in normal infrastructure when you want to put valves in line you have to connect to metal systems so you have metal to uh, sorry plastic to metal systems so you need to solve that problem as well um, and we'll look at that in a minute uh, most fittings are made out of um, steel because it's more durable uh, plastic fittings are available, plastic valves and stuff, but they don't last as long as these. These things need to stay in the ground for 50 to 100 years. Plastic just doesn't last that long. It's, it's probably good for 5 to 10 years. 
So the flange connection, so when you're connecting steel pipe to steel pipe or steel pipe to steel um, valves and stuff, um, you have this fitting here. And the steel pipe ends in a flange, which is like a circular thing with a whole lot of holes through it. Um, you put them both together, you put a gasket in between because the um, steel to steel fitting is not watertight. So you put a rubber or um, a plastic gasket in between and that when you um, tighten the bolts up that will provide a watertight joint. So you've got metal to metal, this is cut away showing the pipeline. When that bolt there is tightened those two flanges will come together very tightly, squeeze the gasket between and provide a watertight joint. Gibbolt connections are a variation on a flange connection, so you can see there's a flange connection there and this is a way of connecting plastic pipe into it. So the plastic pipe comes in here and the Gibbolt connection, what it does is you can see that there's a rubber ring around there. When those bolts are tightened, the rubber ring is squeezed up against the sides of the pipe producing a watertight joint. The advantage of this is that you can um, have a pipeline where you um, two pipe ends there, you just slip a gibbolt over top of it and then you can connect both of them without um, having to put special connections onto it. Uh, so it's good for fixing temporary repairs, it's also good for having a dismantling joint. You can imagine with a system like this you need to be able to dismantle it somehow without actually pulling the whole thing apart. So there's a gibbolt joint there, the gibbolt joint can be untightened and then it can be slid along the, the pipe there and then this can be removed. Um, so Gibbolt joints are also good for being able to dismantle it if you need to do some repairs on it. A stub flange is the way of connecting plastic pipes to steel pipes. So you have your plastic pipe here, oh, slightly offline, I should have fixed that. Um, the, the stub flange is welded onto the plastic pipe. By the way, these two should be in line, it's just a mistake. Uh, stub flange is um, there's a stub flange there, so the black there is the stub flange and the blue is the the, the water pipeline. Uh, it's welded onto there. Um, there is a backing plate there, so you can see that this blue thing here is a black backing plate. It's made out of steel. Uh, you put a gasket between the stub flange and the steel pipe, and once again you've got a, a flange connection there, those bolts there. When those bolts are tightened, they'll pull the stub flange and the steel pipe flange together. Uh, squeeze the gasket and provide a watertight joint.